In my previous video, an interesting article emerged that showed that grip strength was an important biomarker in predicting longevity and other important health metrics such as recovery time post-surgery. This video will be looking at what the science says on grip strength training and exploring its correlation to lifespan. We'll also be exploring the best ways you can improve your grip strength so that you can live a longer and healthier life. The muscles we use for grip are located in the hands and the forearm. Just as with any other muscle in the body, these muscles respond to a stimulus such as resistance and adapt to become stronger. If they are not trained, they'll gradually weaken and atrophy. Weak grip strength limits your ability to perform other movements such as common pulling movements like the deadlift in conventional lifting, the pull-up in calisthenics, and climbing almost anything requires a solid level of grip strength as you are required to pull your body weight up from small and awkward finger holds. In some situations, a weak grip strength might be the limiting factor in your deadlift and pull-up plateaus. In other situations, it can be the difference between life and death. If you've ever shaken someone's hand and it feels like your bones have been crushed in a vice, then you know what a strong grip feels like. But how do we actually get a strong vice-like grip? Before we get started, it's extremely important to appropriately warm up the joints, ligaments and muscles of the working area to reduce the risk of injury. Start with the prayer stretch, hitting some different movement planes to make it more dynamic. Then move on to some gentle wrist rolls with the fingers interlaced. Now let's take things to the ground and work on some wrist circles. If doing these on the ground causes any discomfort, it simply means you are not yet ready to load bear. So regress to a wall and do the same movement standing so that you can limit the amount of pressure you put on the wrists. If they are becoming too easy on your knees, then perform them in a plank position. Now that the joints and ligaments are warmed up, finally either just open and close your hands or grip a tennis ball to target the muscles that we actively use to grip objects. The first method of training we'll be looking at are isolation exercises such as the common grip strength trainer. Normally I'm not the biggest proponent of isolation exercises due to the fact that they don't really align with my training parameters. For starters, they're not very time efficient as you're only targeting one specific muscle group at a time. Another limiting factor is that most isolation exercises generally only train the muscles in a static position. This means they'll rarely simulate more dynamic movement patterns seen in everyday life and sport. For these reasons, I do still stand by the fact that isolation exercises are often not the best way to go. However, as long as you're applying the principle of progressive overload, then the truth is that you'll make progress and strengthen your grip. And with the common grip strength trainer having the advantage of being completely portable, you can use it on the move and almost anywhere you go. The main limiting factor is that a grip strength trainer like the one I have, where you can't adjust the resistance, will quickly become obsolete and more of a tool for endurance training rather than strength. As the only way you can progress when you can't adjust resistance is by adding more and more volume, which obviously isn't sustainable. If you do opt to use a device like a grip strength trainer, then just as with resistance bands, get one with various levels of challenge so that you can keep on progressing for a long time. Other isolation exercises can also be a useful tool in developing a strong grip. Training both the forearm flexors and extensors can be achieved using either dumbbells or a barbell. Simply add the desired level of resistance and curl the bar using only your forearms. You should not be bending your knees and elbows or shrugging with your shoulders. If you are, it's a good sign that you're going too heavy. 
So humble yourself and drop the weight down a bit until you are able to perform the movement with full control and correct technique. The advantages to this exercise are that it's more dynamic, meaning the grip is being trained with the wrist in various different positions. There is a long list of other great isolation exercises, some more unique than others. However, we're going to keep the isolation exercises to a minimum and start incorporating some more dynamic exercises that better simulate how we would use our wrists in the real world and sport. One of the best conventional movements for training grip strength is of course the deadlift. The deadlift requires you to grip the bar while you drive the weight up. A lot of lifters will naturally get very strong forearms from this movement. The issue is that the grip will eventually become a limiting factor as it is generally the weakest chain in the link. This is simply due to the fact that the muscles used for grip are much smaller than the other muscles recruited in the deadlift and therefore will fail prior to the larger muscle groups. This isn't really an issue for casual lifters, but more advanced lifters generally don't want their potential limited and will supplement by using wrist wraps, largely halting the development of grip strength. My workaround is just accepting the fact that I won't be able to lift as much on the deadlift. But the correlation between grip strength and longevity make this a worthwhile sacrifice in the long run. The massive pro is that as with most conventional lifts, progress is very easy to track. As you have an objective measure with how much weight you are lifting, simply increase the amount of weight on the bar and over time you'll develop a stronger grip. It is also a full body movement, meaning that you're training a lot more than just grip strength throughout the motion and therefore getting a lot of bang for your buck in terms of efficiency. You also have the option of using a more dynamic movement, such as the farmer's carry, if this better suits your training goals. Another effective way to train grip strength is using common push and pull movements. These movements are not working grip strength in isolation, but your grip strength is recruited and utilized. Therefore, as long as you're progressing in the movements, you will make progress on your grip strength as well as a byproduct. The push-up recruits and trains many of the muscles used for grip strength with the wrist in an extended position, while the pull-up trains the grip with the wrist in more of a flexed position. If you want to balance physique in terms of muscle symmetry and strength, then it is equally important to train the grip with the wrist in both an extended and flex position. So make sure you incorporate a good balance of both push and pull exercises. Once you are able to easily perform fundamental movements such as the push-up and pull-up, then it is time to incorporate some harder progressions. If you're still stuck on the basics, then check out my previous videos that go over all the regressions to help you unlock the fundamentals. For more of a challenge, you can try knuckle push-ups, fingertip push-ups, wrist push-ups, and handstand work for even more of a challenge. Because now we have the added challenge of incorporating an actively working balance. When it comes to pulling progressions, we can't go past the false grip pull-up. These are very challenging, but are one of the best movements for developing grip strength for calisthenics movements, as they'll help with more advanced movements further into your journey, such as the muscle-up. It is also worth mentioning dead hangs, as they are such an incredible tool for developing grip strength, while also having so many other benefits for the body. I won't go into too much detail though, as we covered them extensively in last week's video. So check that out if you'd like to learn more on the benefits of the dead hang and how to progress in that area. In summary, grip strength is important for so many different areas of life, including longevity and recovery, so it is paramount that it is trained appropriately. While isolation exercises do have their advantages, training more dynamically will always be better for time efficiency and overall athleticism. Remember to incorporate movements that train grip with the wrist in both a flexed and extended position. Choose the movements that are most specific to your own training goals and be consistent. 
Lastly, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for all the love and support you guys have been showing on the videos. We're pretty quickly moving toward 1,000 subscribers and I have a special video coming out for that milestone. So stay tuned and stick around if you want to see what we have in store for that. And as always, feel free to leave any questions, comments or abuse down below. Cheers.